So after making a video on, statistically, who was the best main character out of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime series, people were asking, can you make a sequel to this on the Rivals? And I thought, yes, let's give it a go. From the comments of the last video, a couple of people made some very good points and I think this should be considered. So first of all, these results are not indicative of if you put all these characters in a room together and they dueled, you definitely wouldn't get the results we're gonna get today. Or maybe you would, It who knows. One of the questions I asked in the last video was if people felt that the way that I'm judging these characters' stats was fair and a correct way to indicate their level of skill in the Duel Monsters series. And for the most part, people said that tallying up the wins, losses, the draws, it's, uh, it's interesting. It does show definitely a dimension of a duelist's strength. But I think one of the commenters made a really good point, and the fact is, not all duels are created equal. And I, I do think that's fair to a degree. If you have a character like we're gonna see in today's video that has a hundred, perhaps, off-screen duels against just fodder enemies, no-name people, uh, does that carry the same weight as somebody that defeated Zark in a duel? Someone that defeated Pharaoh Atem, should they be worth the same? Should one Pharaoh Atem be worth a hundred duelists? Unfortunately, there's no way to really quantify that. So unfortunately, I won't be able to incorporate that into this video. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do what I did last time. I'm gonna do it in terms of just how many times they dueled in the series, if they mentioned that they had 30 off-screen duels against no names, if there was a picture of something with duels that they said they dueled this many times, we're gonna include all that. Again, I'm getting all this information off of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Wikia pages, so I might not be 100% accurate. And again, please don't be that one guy that just because I said your main character wasn't the best main character, you go off on a, a rant. <coughs> so first things first, who are our contenders on today's video? Well, first up, we have Seto Kaiba for Duel Monsters, pretty standard. For Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, it immediately gets a little bit complicated because Yu-Gi-Oh! GX kind of had this new rival every season. We had Chaz Princeton, like the first season, then we had Zayn, then we had Jesse. It's a little bit up in the air. Even Asta Phoenix, to a degree, could be considered a rival. However, from the polling that I did on my community tab, I'm gonna go with Chaz Princeton as the main rival. He had quite a lot of duels against Jaden, and although I do think Zayn is a fantastic rival, he didn't have too many duels against him. But uh, I've got a little bit extra for people at the end of the video for if you're a Zayn fan, don't worry. For Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, of course, we have the king himself, Jack Atlas. For Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal, this was another toss-up for me. I didn't know whether to do Reginald Castle or Kite Tenjo. However, after doing another poll online, people seem to think that it should go to Reginald Castle as being the main rival to Yuma. Kite Tenjo, I agree, was a fantastic rival, but he never got a final duel against Yuma. If, it, if we do go by his the last duel he had against Yuma, I don't think Yuma's ever beat Kite Tenjo. So I think Reginald Castle is a, a much better one to go as an antagonist, but Kite fans out there, don't worry, I've got a little bit, bit of a bonus at you at the end. For Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5, we have Declan Akaba, and for Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains, we have Ryoken Kogami, aka Revolver. All right then, let's start, shall we? So first up, we have Kaiba from Duel Monsters. This is it, Yugi. It's over. Kaiba only played 28 duels throughout the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters series. And a couple people actually did mention this. The Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters series, a typical duel, because they're a much slower paced, would last like five to six episodes. So it makes sense as to why Yugi and Kaiba have so few duels within their respective series. And the fact that they weren't the only main characters. We had people like Joey, everybody else in the series as well that had a little bit of extra screen time, unlike some other characters in other series. So it's fair to say the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters characters got shafted a little bit in terms of duels, but that's a good excuse to why they have so few duels, and I thought, yeah, that makes sense. So out of those 28 duels, Kaiba had 20 wins, 5 losses, 1 draw, and 2 DNFs. Imagine you guys want to know what those Kaiba losses were. Well, we'll quickly go for them. He lost against Yugimoto. He lost against Pegasus. He lost against yugi Moto again. He lost against Noah Kaiba, however, this was because Noah was using Mokuba as a meat shield. So again, if we're going by what I said in my last video, if somebody lost a duel, technically they've lost, even if there's this other extreme factors going on outside of it, it still counts as a loss. So if Kaiba got the win against Yugi because Kaiba said he was gonna throw himself off the side of a cliff if Yugi didn't lose, then unfortunately Noah gets the win because Kaiba refused to attack Mokuba and kill his younger brother. 
That's only fair. Kaiba's fifth loss was actually to a virtual version of Yami Yugi in the Pyramid of Light movie. I've decided to include this because he lost to a virtual version of Yami Yugi, so... Yeah, I know he's not a real person, but that should still count. He lost to a virtual version, which is probably inferior to the real one. So, gutted, man. Unfortunate. And one little stipulation about a win that Kaiba had. Kaiba tends to play quite a lot of tag duels throughout the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, and... Kaiba tends to lose within these duels. He tends to sacrifice himself sometimes to let Yugi go on to win the duel. Your attack switches to me! But Kaiba, you won't survive this! Kaiba! In these cases, I've counted them as wins. So, just because Kaiba lost he was defeated in that duel because Yugi went on to finish the match and win. If it wasn't for some of Seto Kaiba's plays, that win wouldn't have been possible. So the count as wins, and that will apply to everybody else on the list as well. So, after all that, what was Kaiba's win to loss ratio? It was 75%. It's all right, I guess. I mean, it's better than most of the characters in the series, but 75%? It's so-so, so-so. Um, better than Yuma Sukumo, anyway. Let's say that. Next up, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and Chaz Princeton. Time to rough them up, boys. Now go! Sure, boss! Chaz played a whopping 94 duels in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX series. Out of those 94 duels, he had 73 wins, 12 losses, 4 draws, and 5 DNFs. Why does Chaz have so many duels? Well, it's because he played 45 off-screen duels against North Academy students and then went on to play a further four. In fact, Chaz played a lot of off-screen duels that were mentioned, but he was like, yeah, I won them. So, fair play to him, man. So, out of all those duels, all those wins, all those losses, what was his win-loss ratio? Why, it was 85.88%, which is better than Kyber's. So, yeah, immediately, people will, people will not like that, will they? <laughs> Again, I'm not saying that Chaz Princeton could beat Kyber in a duel. I'm just saying, statistically, throughout his series, he did better. Next up, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds and Jack Atlas. Who's the one master of faster? Who rules the duels? That's right, it's me! Now, you thought Chaz's 94 duels was a lot. Jack Atlas played 184 duels, which I think might be the most amount of duels anyone has played. I think? Don't quote me on that, but 184 duels, holy hell. Out of those 184 duels, he won 172 times. He had seven losses throughout the series with zero draws and five DNFs, which gives Jack Atlas a 96.09% win ratio. That's incredible. I see why he was called king for a very long time. Yes, 96.09, uh, that's incredible. Jack Atlas. I, I salute you, sir. Next, we move on to Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal, Shark. I guess my long journey has finally come to an end, Yuma. Shark actually only played 32 duels throughout his series. However, out of those 32 duels, he had 25 wins. He also had six losses, zero draws, and just one DNF. This gave Shark a very respectable 80.65% win ratio, which is it's pretty good. Next, we have Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 with Declan Akaba. We must use all our skills. From here on out, I won't hold back. Won't hold back? So you've been holding back? Perhaps. Declan Akaba only played 15 duels throughout his series. And for one of the most powerful duelists in his series, out of those 15 duels, he actually only won nine of them. Which is still good, don't get me wrong, that's still a good percentage. He lost three of them, and he never got a draw, but he had three DNFs as well. So overall, he actually has the same win ratio as Kaiba, which is 75%. However, I will make one case for Declan Akaba. Somewhere in the series, it is stated that he played a bunch of different people off screen, but I just couldn't find where that was. It's referred to as multiple duelists, and I don't know how to quantify that. So I think he has more wins. He definitely has more wins. We could bump the 75% up to about 80%, I reckon. But overall, this is still pretty accurate, more or less, so 75%. And finally, Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns, we have Ryoken Kogami, also known as Revolver or Varus. The Ignis will attempt to escape into Link Reigns. Capture it and bring it to me immediately. Revolver played 13 duels in his series. Out of those 13 duels, he only had six wins, which I was shocked to hear, by the way. I thought Revolver did a lot better than this. Uh, he had three losses, 
three draws and one DNF. And the way this win-loss ratio is calculated is DNFs and draws, uh, they don't affect the score. They effectively count as nothing. It's like the duels never even happened. So we basically just go off the wins and losses. And with these wins and losses, with six wins, three losses, I'm sure you can do the maths, but it's a 50% win-loss ratio. Yeah, it was never really stated that Revolver played many duels off screen or anything like that. He definitely did, and I definitely think that Revolver is one of the greatest duelists. But unfortunately, the stats from the series, they just didn't show, unfortunately. So 50% win-loss ratio. I'm sorry, man. So now that we've got the initial statistics out of the way, let's go into the final leaderboards to determine who is statistically the best main rival in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Let's start with first the total amount of duels that a duel is played. I like to include this one because it shows that the characters are willing to risk their win to loss ratio, which I think is something to be respected. If someone just played one duel, won, and just like stopped there and like, I have a 100% win loss ratio, ha ha ha. I don't know, I think there's something to be appreciated about going out there and getting some duels. But in first place is Jack Atlas with 184 duels. In second place is Chaz Princeton with 94 duels. In third is Shark with 32 duels. In fourth is Kaiba with 28 duels. In fifth is Reggie Akaba with 15 duels. And in sixth place is Revolver with 13 duels. Those results speak for themselves, that makes sense. Next up we're gonna go to is the win percentage. Who had the best win percentage score? Why, that was Jack Atlas with a 96.09% win ratio. Fantastic, the only character on this list to actually be in the 90% and very close to 100 I must say. Uh, in second place is Chaz Princeton with an 85.88% win ratio. In third is Shark with an 80.65% win ratio. In fourth is Kyber with a 75% win ratio. In fifth is Reggie with a 75% win ratio. However, technically you could bump this up a little tiny bit if you wanted to, if you did a bit more research, but I think it's fair leaving at 75 for now anyway. And in sixth place is Revolver with a 50% win ratio. What Revolver struggled with was not enough duels in his series, and he drew too many times. If he didn't draw against Yusaku three times, he might have had a better score. Oh well. So next up we have the duel score. The way this works is if a character got a win, they get three points. If a character got a draw, they get one point. If a character got a loss, they get nothing. The point of this is that it punishes people that had loads of duels, but had loads of losses. And it rewards people that might have only had a few duels, but most of them were wins. So, who did the best in terms of duel score? Why? In first place, it's Jack Atlas, with an incredible 516 points. In second place was Chaz, with 223. In third was Shark, with 75 points. In fourth was Kaiba, with 61 points. In fifth was Reggie Akaba with 27. And in sixth was Revolver, with 21. So with all these stats out of the way with now, we can now find out who was statistically the best main rival in Yu-Gi-Oh. Here's what the scoring system looks like, and let's start in sixth place, shall we? The final total, and the sixth best main rival in Yu-Gi-Oh is Revolver, with six points. In fifth is Reggie Akaba with nine points. In fourth is Seto Kaiba with 12 points. In third with the bronze is Shark with 18 points. In second with the silver is Chaz Princeton. And in first place with the gold and a perfect score, it goes to Jack Atlas. Congratulations, Jack. Those statistics do not lie. You cannot argue with how well he has actually done there. That is really impressive. So yeah, Jack Atlas, according to this, is the best main rival in Yu-Gi-Oh. Guys, what do you think about this list, by the way? Do you agree? You're absolutely entitled to disagree. And if you can make a list better than this, I wholly encourage you to do that because there are, must be a better way to judge characters in the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game than just the amount of duels they had, the win percentage, and the duel score. The caliber of the duels that they had, you need to assign points to them. I think the best way you can do it is like, you play someone like Zark, you get 10 points for beating them. You play someone like Scud <laughs> from uh, the Dark Side of Dimensions, you get like one point because that's the caliber of duelists they are. They need like a ranking system attached to them. However, that's not unfortunately how dueling works. It's just all wins and losses at the moment. So that would be a better way. And as promised, I did say that my boy Zane and my boy Kite would have a, a quick little mention in this video. So just to let you all know, Zane Truesdale had 40 duels. He had 31 wins. He had five losses. 
However, he lost to various duelists. It's never specified how many. He went on like a massive losing streak. So when I say his percentage, we might have to just bump it down a little bit. He had one draw and three DNFs. Uh, with these stats, he got an 86.11% win ratio. However, if we factor in some off-screen losses, it might be more around 80%. Whereas Kite Tenjo, why, he only had 28 duels in his series, but out of those 28 duels, he had 19 wins, only two losses, one draw, but a whopping six DNFs. But luckily, DNFs don't affect your score. So he had a 90.48% win ratio. Yeah, Kite was actually a better win percentage than shark by a whole 10%. That's, that's quite impressive. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was made for fun. Don't take it too seriously. I'm just pulling stats off of uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Wikia pages, putting them all together. Um, I'd love to know though, who you personally think with your own biases and opinions, who you would personally rate as the best main rival in Yu-Gi-Oh! For me personally, not including all the stats, I would definitely say that Seto Kaiba is my number one, then possibly followed by Revolver as my number two, um, Chaz, I think, would probably be the bottom for me. But he did grow over time, so that's probably fair to say. But yeah, I'd love to know what you guys thought in the comment section below. Let me know in the comments. But other than that, thank you all for watching and see you later.